What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today we're looking at RL Craft, the mod pack that is currently blowing up, has 1.6 million downloads from the Curse Launcher and a lot of you guys are wondering how on earth do you go ahead and set up your own multiplayer server for you and your friends to join. Well, of course you can do it the single player way where you open to LAN and use something like Hamachi or go ahead and try and set up port forwarding but that's a hell of a lot more difficult in my opinion than actually downloading the official dedicated server for RL Craft. So today we'll be looking at how to set up a RL Craft dedicated server and get your friends to join. So first of all, make sure that you have RL Craft installed because you'll be needing it to connect and actually test your server. If you'd like to find out how to do that, make sure to head to the link down in the description below or click the card on the top right to find out how to install RL Craft on your Windows or Mac computer. So first of all, head across to the link down in the description below, which will take you to CurseForge. Once there, you'll see a page similar to this, RL Craft, 1.5 million downloads, etc, etc. So once you're on this page, head across to the Files tab at the very top, Next to description, right under the picture, name and 1.5 million downloads up here. Scrolling down a bit, you'll see main file, and this is the client version. Of course, we're looking for the server version. Scrolling down further, you'll see a bunch of things over here. So, of course, the current version is 2.7.1 at the time of video release. Yours may be a bit different, but what you'll be looking for is under recent files, the very top one on the list should have a plus one server pack next to it. Of course, if your one currently doesn't like this one up here, it contains a client side fix and not one for the server. So we'll head down one to the closest plus one server pack. Go ahead and hit that button and you'll see a page like this. So instead of hitting download or install up here, this is in fact the client version. Scrolling down, you'll see additional files, followed by RL Craft Server Pack 1.12.2 Beta 2.7, or whatever it is at the time of you checking. Go ahead and hit the big download button next to it, and wait for the download to complete. Once that's done, you can open up the server pack by clicking on your download. Then you'll see something like this inside of the zip. Opening up the folder, you'll see this information over here. So we'll drag and drop this RL Craft server pack folder onto something like our desktop or another memorable location. Once that's done, you can close the zip and delete it if you'd like. Opening up the folder that we just extracted, you'll see this information over here. Having a look inside of this, there is a set these and server properties text file. Double clicking on it, opens it up in Notepad, and this is what you should change inside of server.properties when it generates for stability and compatibility. So we'll leave this open somewhere on our screen that we can refer to later. Inside of config, you'll find the config files for all of the mods. We won't be messing with this unless you find it absolutely necessary. Mods, you'll find all of the mods that are currently installed where you can add and remove server side mods. Under resources, it's most of Minecraft's things. Scripts, same thing and structures, same thing. So now, of course, you may be confused as I was originally on how to get these to actually run. Well, simply you need to download the Forge server. So looking back at the downloads page, you can see that it's RL Craft Server Pack 1.12.2. So that's the version of Forge that we need to download. Head across to the second link in the description down below, which is the Minecraft Forge download website. Once you're here, on the left hand side, look for 1.12 and hit the plus next to it. Then. 1.12.2 and click on that. Once you're on this page here, you can choose either a latest or recommended. I'd say go for the latest one. Then hit the Windows Installer button and then it should download. After opening it up, you'll see a page like this. We'll go Install Server and then choose a location to install it. So I'll go ahead and make a new folder on my desktop that I'll name RL Craft Server. You can of course put this anywhere. Then after selecting the folder, we'll hit Open and then OK. It'll then go ahead and download the Minecraft Forge 1.12.2 installation. Simply wait for it to finish. Once it's done, you can go ahead and hit OK. Then open up the folder that you just created, and inside of it you'll see this. Next up, we'll be right-clicking, New, Text Document, and we'll make sure to go ahead and select everything here, including .txt, and we'll name it something like start.bat. Hit Enter and hit Yes. If you don't see a .txt after it, head across to the View tab and then make sure that file name extensions is checked. Right click, edit to open it with Notepad. Next, go ahead and copy the piece of text from the description down below. Once you have it copied and pasted, simply hit Ctrl S to save. And then there's a couple of things that we need to double check before we go ahead and close this. 
XMS is the minimum amount of dedicated RAM, and XMX is the maximum, so we've got it between 5 and 6 gigs. Of course, you can adjust this to be the correct values for your PC, but I'd say somewhere around here is probably more than fine. Then you'll notice that server.jar doesn't actually exist in the folder over here. Simply copy it, and we'll be renaming the forge, etc, etc, .jar to that, so server.jar. Click anyway to save the changes. We'll go ahead and close the batch file that we were editing, and we'll double click on start. You'll see it get this far, and then say failed to load EULA. So go ahead and close it, and you'll find a bunch of new files here. EULA.txt, simply double click on it, and change false to true. Save, and close. Then we'll simply run start.bat again, and wait for it to finish. And then once it finishes generating like this, we can go ahead and close it. Then we'll go ahead and go back to the rlcraft server.zip that we downloaded and extracted earlier, and we'll simply cut by hitting Control X, and pasting Control V into this folder over here. And then we'll wait for the move to complete. Hit replace, and that's that. Close out of the zip that we extracted, then your rlcraft server pack should be looking like this. Looking at the text file we referred to earlier, we can go ahead and change these. So, server.properties, we'll right click, open with, more apps, and then notepad, always open, and OK. So, let's go ahead and change these. So, allow flight, we can simply copy, click to the end, control F, control V, and hit find next. Then we'll change it to true. We'll look for the next thing we need to change, difficulty. Again, clicking at the bottom, find window, paste, find next, and we need to change it to 3. Then max tick time, we'll click at the bottom, paste, find, we change this to negative 1. Then view distance, we'll click to the very bottom, paste, find next, and we'll change it to what it says, which is 6. You can then go ahead and set an MOTD if you'd like, and hit Control S to save. Make a note of the server port that is mentioned up here. So I'm going to copy this, and paste it into the server properties file, just so we remember it for later. Close that file, and then you have your server basically created and almost completely set up. Of course, because we generated the world file before we installed any mods, I'd recommend just deleting the world folder entirely so that we can get a completely fresh world gen when we run the server. So of course, this will work if we go ahead and run our start.bat that we created, and after a bit of loading, once we get to the screen over here, you can see that it says done, and we're completely loaded into RLCraft with all the mods up here. So we can simply type in stop, and hit enter. We'll go ahead and save it, and we can hit enter to close that window. Now that we've done that, in order for your friends to connect to the server, you'll need to go ahead and port forward this port that we copied earlier to your PC. So if you'd like more information on how to do that, there's a video down in the description below that takes you to a super in-depth port forwarding video. However, I'll run through it very quickly here anyways. So looking inside of my sample router over here, all you need to do is simply under external port, enter the number that we copied earlier, which should be 25565. If you're running more than one server, I'd recommend changing that inside of the server.properties file and then port forward like so. External port, internal port, and under protocol, we'll select TCP slash UDP. And under local IP, you'll need to find your local computer's IP address. To do that, simply hold start and press R. Then type in CMD and hit enter. Then we'll go ahead and enter IP config one word and hit enter again. Then you should see something like Ethernet adapter if you're connected with cable. Otherwise, you'll see something like wireless. And you'll be looking for the IPv4 address down here. Mine is 192.168.1.20. And all we need to enter on the router page is in fact 20. Yours might be a bit different, but we'll go ahead and hit add new. Once you've done that, you've port forwarded from the router to your computer, and external people should be able to connect to your computer and your server. Of course, however, we haven't let it through our firewall, so we need to go ahead and do that now. If you're using an antivirus with a built-in firewall, you'll need to go ahead and make sure that that is either disabled or you're allowing that port through. I'd highly recommend the latter, which is allowing it through your antivirus instead of disabling the firewall entirely. If your antivirus doesn't have a firewall, or you're not using firewall software, then we need to allow it through Windows. So we'll simply hit start and type in firewall. Then we'll head across to Windows Defender Firewall, and then inbound rules in the top left. In the top right, we'll be heading to new rule, port, next, 25565, TCP, next, allow, next, next, and we'll name it Minecraft. Hit finish or press enter, new rule, port, next, 
paste in 25565 again, UDP this time, next, allow, next, next, and we'll name it Minecraft yet again. Hit enter, and in the top left, we'll be heading to outbound rules. New rule, port, next, paste, TCP, next, allow, next, next, Minecraft, and hit enter. New rule, port, next, paste, UDP, next, allow, next, next, Minecraft, and enter. Now we have successfully both port forwarded and allowed it through our router, and you should be able to collect your IP address that other people can connect to by going to Google and typing in, what is my IP? It's super simple, but I won't be demonstrating that here. Once you've done that, you can close out of all of the windows, we won't save that, and we'll run start.bat. Then your server should start up, and you can go ahead and start RL Craft. Then to connect to your own server on your local PC, head across to multiplayer and either add a server or direct connect. And under server address, either enter 127.0.0.1 or simply type local host, one word. Hit done and you should see that your Minecraft server is online. Of course, you can change the max players and MOTD within your server files. You should see that you have something like one millisecond ping and by joining it, you should see a bunch of information pop up in the server window over here. And there we have it, we're inside of our RL Craft world. We've got a really unfortunate spawn, but that doesn't really matter. Of course, if you try and type in commands here, such as game mode one for a creative, you'll see that it says we do not have permission. Of course, if you're used to Minecraft, you can tab into the server window over here and type in op followed by your name. My name's Techno. Boom, done. Let's go ahead and do game mode C. And now we're in creative mode, flying around as per normal anywhere else. So that is how to set up your own RL Craft server and to get your friends to join, simply give them your external IP that you find via Google. And that's about it. If you'd like to see how to install Optifine or another mod like that, then make sure to check out the link down in the description below or the card in the top right that will take you to a video on that. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.